point of view, and I'm not even halfway through. So, Ugo, I don't think I'll be finished today. I don't know what I was thinking. It's easy because you you were thinking you were hitting the clock. Yeah. Uh, when you get to, when you get to here, if, if I'm looking right here, when I get when you get to here, could you tell me if I'm right or wrong? I did. Oh yeah, I will. I will. Okay. Well, I can tell you right now, right here. Okay. Start on the PMAT. All right. Um, before I read further, that thing PMAT means prophase, metaphase, and antiphase, telophase. That's the only little rule you can follow, and that that little word is the order of the phases in my toast. It's also the phase of the meiosis, too. But you have two PMATs. They divide twice. In the meiosis, the first division, you get your haploid number. In the second division, you usually get a double amount of cells. One, one cell gives you four cells. In meiosis, in mitosis, one cell gives you two. And the only time you have meiosis is in the ovaries or testes when you make an egg sperm. That's the head of That's another lesson. So right now, um, just remember that mitosis is PMAT, followed by cytokinesis, and then you go into the cell, the, the cell cycle. Interphase, there's no I out there, so the interphase is not a part of mitosis proper. Interphase is what the cell is doing when he's not doing mitosis, okay? So, let's take it. I can't stress enough that too many teachers refer to cell division as mitosis. That's not correct. Mitosis is just the division of the nucleus. That's all it is. And it wasn't for cytokinesis, you'd have two nuclei on one cell. So mitosis happens first, give you two nuclei. And then the cell cleaves, and that gives you two cells. So mitosis must be followed by cytokinesis, or you won't have two cells. You have one cell with two nuclei. So, and so many times I hear people say that you know, mitosis is cell division, that's just, that's just not true. It's just nuclear division. Um, the cells you get are called daughter cells. The one you had is the mother cell. I'm kind of chauvinist, but that's the way it is. Um, and the daughter cells are produced right after cytokinesis is finished. And the daughter cells go through the interphase. And later they will themselves divide and you have two mother cells, which were two daughter cells, and they, they give rise to four. When you first get conceived on that day that you know, your mother and father first joined, and you are one cell big, mitosis sets over. And nine months later, it's not finished, but the baby is born. It's happening right now. Mitosis never finishes, really. But during those nine months, it's going really, really fast. So that when that baby is born, he's got a whole bunch of cells. And what's really amazing to me is that that one cell in the beginning will give rise to your eyes, and to your ears, and to your nose, and to... How does that cell differentiate to be so many kinds of cells? It's all controlled by the DNA. Well, not only if you have eyes, that your eyes are blue or green or whatever. Um, and like I said before, embryology is just a fascinating study of how the egg develops to become a baby. Um, genetics is fun also to figure out how we got to be like we are. If you have blue eyes, brown eyes, if your hair is curly, if it's straight, if it changes over time, um, all this stuff is genetics. But what we're doing here though is just looking at how a cell propagates itself. It must do mitosis first. It must do cytokinesis next. That will give you two brand new cells. I mentioned these. Um, when I first saw that, when I first, I thought G meant row. It means gap. Gap one, sometimes it's gap two. And what they're basically just saying, there's a gap of time between mitosis and you gearing up to make another cell. The gap is between mitosis and synthesis. Because when synthesis is the S, you're starting to make the replication. You're starting to make more DNA then. So you're making more DNA, you're, you're already getting ready to divide, so you're not even there yet, but you're getting ready. Because it takes a long time to make 92 chromosomes, 46 for each cell. So once you get them made in S phase, and now okay, chromosomes are ready, and then G, G2 starts. That's where you double your ribosomes, you double, you, you double the length of your ER, 
you double your um, Goji apparatus so that you have enough for two brand new cells. And when G2 is finished, mitosis starts. And the actual division, first you must divide the nucleus. And if that's over, you got two nuclei, then you get to divide the cell. And then it starts over again. And um, these cells right here, it's about a month from the cell I'm touching here was, was produced about a month ago. And they will be produced by the stratum uh, germin germinativum, and they'll migrate upward, and they'll change their shapes and uh, pick up color or don't pick up color as they move to the surface. And at the very surface, they are dead by then because they have no blood vessels. They're so far away from the, from the food supply, they do die on purpose. We call that dangerous. But regular bathing solves that problem. And that's why you bathe regularly. That dandruff, that's fodder for bacteria to live in. And so if you don't have good good bathing habits, you're going to have health problems. That's all there is to it. Okay? But these three steps are not a part of this. They're a part of the cell cycle, just like he is. And being a cycle, I don't care where you start. You can start any way you want to in a cycle. And just get back and stop there. So if you want to start here, then you can move this way, then that. If you want to start there, you move around. But you still get back to where you are because it never stops, except for the brain. Brain cells get off the cycle. They don't make more of themselves. When one of them gets, one of them gets injured, it's gone. All the other cells, even heart cells, can repair themselves if they have blood supply. And most of your heart attacks are because of lack of blood supply. So if you, have a, if you have a minor heart attack and their blood situation fixes itself, then those cells can grow. But if you have a major heart attack with a major, uh, major blockage, then you're going to find you're going to keep on suffering. That's when they take a vein from your leg and give you a bypass. Because wherever the damage is, they want to bypass it and let blood go around the damage. And they, they use veins in your leg. The veins in your leg are very big, they're very sturdy, and they work good. If they take the vein from your leg, those blood, the, the blood using that will find another way to get to to Panama City. I mean, if I drive at, at 431 in the block, I can get down there. I take other roads and the same thing in your leg. If they remove that that highway, then blood finds another way to get down. So you're not going to hurt it through circulation. Um, I'm about to show you a picture next. Is um. It's not, it's not mitosis. It is a cell just about to enter mitosis. Um, there's metabolism going on, a lot of metabolism going on, um, because you've got to make all this new stuff <coughs> before you get to divide your nucleus. Chromosomes, now, now the picture you're about to see, I see a bunch of stuff, but I don't see chromosomes yet. You see chromatin. And um, the centrioles, well, it used to be one, now there are two. They play a role in, in, in cell division. Um, when a cell is in, is in interface, there's only one. But in G2, you make two of them. And they move to the opposite sides. Uh, their job's going to be later on to pull the chromosomes out of the middle. That's going to be their job. But they, when it comes to work, their job, so the cell's going to divide down in the middle. They've got to be gone. And so the centrioles, We'll pull the chromosomes out of the middle, and then the cell divides. And that's that is perfect. This is an artist's depiction of um, a late interface. Um, I can't see one. I just see like a bunch of spaghetti inside here. See the green thing right there? Now that used to be one, and they're starting to go apart. So that is late interface. You see those centrioles starting to migrate toward the poles. Poles means part the north and south pole of the earth. They're far apart as you can get. So the poles would be like over here and over here. And then half chromosome be pulled this way, half pulled that way, the tail divides down the middle and you got two brand new little double cells. But right now though, I do see the um, centrioles starting to move apart. I cannot yet see individual chromosomes. That tells me I'm not in prophase yet. If I can see the chromosomes, I'm in prophase. But right now, I see a thickening, but I can't tell one block of stuff from another block. You will later on. 
Is that late interface? Okay, late interface. What up? Late interface? It's late interface. Okay, now we're going to do my touches. And I'll show you pictures also. I got the same pictures from the same artist. Uh, there, there are all kinds of pictures, and I got some of back in my PowerPoint of a number of different images. Some real, some are drawn. Uh, PMAT, P M A T. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. And prophase, it means first. Okay. Um, this is when the chromosomes, you can see them. You can see them now. Now I'm about to show you a picture of them. Um, the centrioles are further apart. They're, they're not there yet, but they're further apart than they were a minute ago. Um, you'll see fibers starting to cross. They're called spindle fibers. They resemble a football sideways. Start to cross the um, the face of the cell. And spindle fibers, the mitotic spindle, some of them are going to hook to chromosomes and some are going to hook to themselves. So I'm going to hook to chromosomes, and I'll show you a picture right now, well, in a minute. Now, this is where the nuclear membrane has got to get out, it's got to go. Because those chromosomes got to be able to be pulled apart. If you're inside the nucleus, you can't get to them. So during prophase, the nuclear envelope membrane starts to dissolve. And you see bits and pieces of it, finally it's gone. And then the chromosomes, they're just out there mixing all around cytoplasm. Now, where the fiber hits the chromosome, on the chromosome is a central mirror. There's a kinetic core around it, and the fiber hooks to the kinetic core. So you have the fiber hook the kinetic core, the kinetic core circles the central mirror. You have two chromosomes together, actually. They're, they're like this, side by side. And they're joined by the central mirror. I got one fiber coming in this way, one that way, and shorten, they're going to pull both of them apart. And I, I think I got a YouTube video showing that to you. They got some real, I, why did you show me that? There's some real videos of real cells doing it. And uh, in real time, it goes fast. Okay? Now, I want, I want to take a moment. I need to show you about the chromosome structure because I'm going to refer to a V formation later on. So I'm going to kind of wait on prophase and just show you the chromosome structure. Now, this is one chromosome before it replicates. Now, when it makes a copy, the two copies stay together. This one makes two, but they stay stuck together right here. These two used to be that one. Remember replication? Mm -hmm. How you make, you, you got two total ones? Well, they are not done. When they're like this, they're called chromatids. Now, they are chromosomes. But as long as they're together, we don't call them chromosomes. We call them chromatids. Now, once that thing breaks and they separate, then you may call them chromosomes. But right now, um, if you, the numbers on here, it's just giving you an idea that these <coughs> are identical chromosomes made from this one. Replication caused this to happen. But they don't separate, they don't come apart, they're connected by a central mirror. And around the central mirror is the kinetic core. Which I don't have later. But this one, and this one, are identical twins to that one which is gone, of course. Because this one makes a copy, and then he and his copy, they become that. So there's your... That's before replication, there's after replication, and you see that the chromosome makes a copy of the cell. And the two copies, we call them chromatids. But they do stay hooked together. They don't separate yet. They'll separate in metaphase, in anaphase. All right? <clears throat> another picture of it. This is another picture. Um, now, right there was the central mirror. Right there's the central mirror. There is the kinetic core. And there's a fiber coming in to attach. When he shortens, he's going to pull this one away from this one, and they're going to separate. When these two fibers shorten, pop, and they're going to separate. When they separate, they're going to look like, like a little V. If you if you take spaghetti and pull it across your plate, it's going to form a V in it as it as it as the ends trail behind the fork. Well, when this thing splits, that. Mm -hmm that chromatin is going to form a V as it's pulled. The V is going to look like this. 
and the points can be pulled this way, and that's why it looks like a V. I got the, all these chromosomes will be V's pointing that way, and those will be V's pointing this way. And the V is what you're going to look for when you show me that uh -huh. NFA. I'm looking for the V. I see the V, they're being pulled. If they're not, if they're being in the middle and not being pulled, that's manifested. Now all these, the phases are so, I, have, I don't often understand how folks can mix them up. I do know because you have experience. But they're so clear cut, if you know what to look for, V, they're being pulled, that's anaphase, okay? But anyway, they're still together, and, and over here, this one was by himself, and they copy. They're still glued together, this represents one chromosome really and truly, does it not? But the one chromosome has copied itself, and they got two chromatids hooked by a central mirror, and then the spindle comes in and hooks onto a structure called the kinetical. Okay? <clears throat> now, see the V? Mm -hmm. They're being pulled this way. Now, when, when those fibers start to shorten, snap they come apart and they're going to pull away and they're, they're going to look like V's pointing to where they're being pulled that's anaphase but this green thing represents this thing which is the spindle fiber shortening okay now let's now now that we got this done let me show you I'm, I'm back to my slideshow I can now see individuals and look back over here can you see individuals here are they all tied together I see no light between them I look at this one though do you see some already separated I see one here I see one here I see one there so I and now look how far apart these are I want to put the two pictures side by side. If I get lucky, you'll be able to compare the two pictures. I thought maybe going back and forth. That'd be enough. I mean, you make your own PowerPoint, it's so nice. Okay. Um, I need to draw me a line. You need to format that line. I need to make it bigger. I think I need to make it maybe yellow. So it'll stand out. They don't get confused which is which. Now, I'm going to save that bad boy. I intend to keep that forever. So now we can look at them side by side. I can show you the difference in the two phases. Now, this is the um, this is the interphase. We're not we're not in mitosis, but I see now that I'm getting I'm trying to get a little blotchy. I got one here. I see it, it, it easily. Here, there's no they're all together still, and I do see that my central zone is. They're moving apart now. Okay, and, but if you notice, the thickening is apparent in prophase, is not apparent in late interphase. Okay? Yeah. Now here's a picture of, of late prophase. And in late prophase, you see that the, the, cent the central mirrors are they're, they're there. They're, they're at the far ends. They're starting to make the little the fibers. You can see right there where it's attaching to the central mirror. Now the problem is though, I gotta have one over here too. So this ain't finished yet because if he pulls, the whole thing goes that way. I gotta pull them apart, right? So there's gonna be another one going out of here that's gonna attach there eventually. And then they both shorten that will separate. But right now it's not ready yet. So that's why it's called 
like prophase because these these little green fibers more have got to grow and I've got to attach both sides these are anchoring points so when they start pulling they can push against themselves and I don't want the cell going this way do you I want the cell to pull the chromosome I don't want the chromosomes to pull the cell in now if you pull the cell in they don't move out of the middle do they so this is this is your is your braces so that I can push against this while I pull you to me. That's the braces you're going to find. But I tell you earlier, some spindle fibers don't touch the chromosome. Some go across and anchor themselves to be your brace. When I start to pull, you come in this way, and I ain't going towards you. Because this thing here, if he moves that way, and these don't move out in the middle, we got a major problem. But that cell is going to divide right down the middle where they're at. They can't be gone. And it works, it works beautifully. It has for all these years of being on this earth. It works when you have you cut your stuff and you heal. It works it works perfectly. Okay. Now, after prophase, there's a phase called metaphase, PMAT. Metaphase is the shortest lived phase. I mean, you're gone. Shuffle in. If you blink your eye, you'll miss it. And you'll find if you're looking for pictures of metaphase, it's hard to find them. Because when you click your shutter, it's already happened and you clipped the thing in anaphase. So actually you've got to click the shutter and lay a prophase and I hope that it will coincide with your shutter click so you actually get what you're looking for. Okay? But anyway, um, metaphase happens after prophase. And in metaphase, that means middle. They have now lined the pairs they're coming to right down the middle. They're down the middle. They might be this way. Um, Oh, we had a professor, but he, met, he, he was so tricky. He, um, I'm not sure what he did to us. And I ain't bragging, but I began, to, I began to think what he had done. He had a picture. Now, if you draw it this way, and then down the middle, there's no doubt, is there, that that is metaphase. This bad boy drew it this way like looking from the side. When you spun it, they all lined up. You spin it back, and you say, what phase is that? And we looked at it, and we said, there's nothing like that. And we'd be talking, and I began to think that maybe he spun a thing around, and if you took, and if this thing was near us, that's far away from us, and you spun it, it's going to look like that. And he's telling us that you can't always bet you're going to see it lined up that way. It might sometimes be flat to you. And if you can look this way, you see them flat. But looking this way, they look round. But there's no phase that looks like that. And I'm going, what could that possibly be? And I saw they're still put together. So I know it's an antiphase. And in prophase, uh, we were debating between prophase and, and metaphase. And, and one person said, they look too perfect to be prophase. Yeah. So we said, I bet you that's, 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 and, uh, that's metaphase turned sideways to us. That's what it was. It drove us nuts. But they explain stuff. Like when you see a picture on the internet, it's always turned a perfect way. Mm -hmm. If you can turn it 180 degrees, it won't look, it won't look like that anymore. And the man, I got, he, he made us think about that one because I didn't know what in the world that was at first. And we began to brainstorm and um, came out to be what it was. So when you see my pictures, they're always going to be a perfect line to y'all. But you don't always gonna find them like that. And there's a picture there of metaphase. They're down the middle. Let me show you something that you may have missed. Can y'all see the little brown chromosome right there? Mm -hmm. Can you see them really good um, right here? Mm -hmm. Before this cell got in this position, did he have four chromosomes or eight chromosomes? Think about it. That represents how many chromosomes really and truly. Is a copy of how many? One. This cell only has four chromosomes. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. The diploid number is four. But I see eight structures. Mm 
Well, that's no problem. When they separate and divide, it's four and four, right? So when you look at these things, you can be real careful. This really means one chromosome from a tear. And there's one chromosome from the tears. And when they pull apart, you get to see then to four and four. But when you first made this bad boy right here, four of these became four of those. When you pull them apart, you're back to here. So what I'm telling you is that one yellow, one yellow one made those two chromatids. And one, I guess red, made that those two chromatids. So to me, when I look at this, I see four chromosomes. I don't see eight. I see eight chromatids, which I know full well when the thing splits and pops, it's going to be four again, like it was in the beginning. Now, if that was going to be a sperm cell, it would be four, it would be two. So two for me and two for my wife made a brand new cell with four, which is what we are supposed to have in this case. But anyway, um, these do, I wish they I wish they're a different color. But they, they, they blend in right here. You almost can't see. I do see this central mirror, and I saw that one. But that's, that's another one over here. And here, you sure can't see anything. Yeah. I can't tell there's four or 1,400 right there. But here, I clearly know one pair, two pair, three pair, four pair. There's four chromosomes making those pairs. And now they line across the middle. These, these green fibers are pushing and pulling and lining them up. Okay? Um, if you look at this, uh, it's about 1 o'clock running down to 7 o'clock. It's not always going to be a, just right down the middle. If I took this bad boy and spun it, you might find that they look like this. So spin it back, you see it down the middle. Depends how you spin it. So this is called a plate, the metaphase plate. And it's from 7 o'clock up to about, I would say, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Okay? Anaphase is probably the phase that I most easily recognize. Because I see the V's. Those, those V's in my mind stand out. Uh, metaphase, I, I know metaphase. Prophase will sometimes make me look hard at it because I've gone prophase or is prophase or anaphase. Now, prophase or, or interphase. I look hard saying, now, if it's prophase, do I see any chromosome? If I see some, I go, prophase. If I can't make any out, I say interphase. That's the two I got to split this cross over. But metaphase, cut and dried, buddy. Anaphase, cut and dry, telophase, no problem. If you can get past the interphase, prophase hurdle, you're making 100. Now, on this one, the chromatids, they separate, they're, they're pulled apart, snap, at the um, kinetic core, and they move toward the, the centrioles. That middle centriole, like a little starburst, it's called the aster. So the chromatids, which actually are now chromosomes. When they separate, you have the right to call chromosomes in, buddy, because they are. And they move apart. And um, the tubules shorten for them. And you know how, how, es how an escalator will carry, would be moving up? And you're walking up too? That's how they do it. The, the fiber is pulling them, and they're walking too. I mean, you can step onto the escalator and stand there with it. Or you can walk up the two, right? And double your speed. Well, they do the double speed. The, the fiber is pulling them, and they're walking too. They want to they get out of the way. There's going to be a major hacksaw coming down through there called cytokinesis. So as the, as the fibers shorten, they also walk up the fibers too. So they, they're making good, good progress to get to the poles for the asters. The aster being the central part of the central zone. Now, see my bees? See my bees? Well, if I see that, I, that's anaphase, buddy. So they're being pulled, and they're, being, they're walking, and this is dragging behind them like, like, a, like a broken leg. And you will see the V form. And when that V tells you one thing, 
anaphase. There's no cycle but anaphase at the chromosomes in the vela. Now when they when they get out here to the to the ends and now the, the middle is free to, to do its thing. Telophase happens last in this process. And telophase, the, the chromosomes, they're at the, the asters. Um, a nuclear membrane starts to form around them. They're already starting to go back to the nucleus. Um, the chromosomes start to get thinner and thinner and you can't tell one element before long. It's like a big bowl of spaghetti. You, you get better, you get back interface. Um, and as they thin out, when you can no longer see them, you again call it chromatin. If you can see them, they're chromosome. And like an like interface, I couldn't tell one by one, that's still chromatin. Well, when I start to see them individually in prophase, they're called chromosomes then. So basically, chromosomes are not found in interphase, they're found in prophase. Interphase are still getting thicker and thicker. Now, cytokinesis starts to occur during telophase. It might even start toward the end of anaphase. I mean, as it's being pulled, it might be creeping in. So I, I have seen the cleavage start, and I see the V's, and I'm going, they're not there yet. That's not very hard to divide. That's fine. They'll be out of the way. They'll be out of the way. So you haven't got to wait till anaphase ends to start the pinching in half. Now, during telophase, you, you see it, boy, it's underway. I see the cell pinching. But it can start during late anaphase. But during telophase, it is in the progress of dividing the cytoplasm. <coughs> and that means you got two brand new cells. Looks like that. They're all over here. Then the nucleus start to come back. Now they're on one side. There's This is called a cleavage fur. And he's pinching the half right down through here. This is cytokinesis. These are, are telophase phases. So the whole thing be, would be telophase of mitosis accompanied by the cleaving of the cytoplasm, which is cytokinesis. So when you do the last phase, you can expect to see cytokinesis occurring with it. And no point in waiting once those cells, when they get over here, why wait? They're out of the way. Go ahead and split the sucker in half. And you'll find on this one, when they get far over here, then he'll start peaching, and they're still moving, but they're out of the way. They're out of the way, I mean, they're good enough. I mean, you cut it close sometimes, but you don't have to wait till anaphase is totally over before you start peaching in. And this is, this is the cleavage fur. Again, it's from about one o'clock to seven o'clock. It goes right down the same path, and they lined up. I mean, this pathway <coughs> sets the track for all the rest of it. And even, even the pinching goes on on that same track. Okay? And in animals, it's like taking a, a thread and if you took a balloon, blew it up, and then took a thread and tied the balloon in half and put it real tight, you get two bubs, right? Well, that, the thread you pull tight would be this actin that actually causes the pinch. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a physical thing making that stuff a pinch. Actin. <coughs> now, what happens with leather when you wet leather? Get bigger or get smaller? Smaller. Smaller. Well, the actin being a protein can change its shape and get smaller and smaller and smaller and find it and oh, you got two cells. So, this whole thing right here is because actin is wrapped around it. <coughs> and it's starting to get shorter and shorter, pulling in the sides. So this whole process is because of a protein called actin getting shorter and shorter and shorter. It's not, it's not magic, it's, 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 it happens on the <coughs> um, And when the actins finally got all the way down through there, you're going to have your cell two brand new cells, and they're called daughter cells. And if the cell starting off had four, like this one did, and those four made doubles, there need to be eight chromatids, and the chromatids are separated through anaphase, you're right back where you are. The two brand new cells have four chromosomes, it's like the first cell did in the first place. And that's why mitosis works. So every cell produced <coughs> just like the one that it came from. And when you heal a cut, that's a lot of them doing that at the same time. 
It ain't, it ain't here. You go first. They all do it. You have like hundreds of the body to still, because your skin is your only barrier you have to the outside. When you cut yourself, you you hurt that barrier. So the, if you uh, if if you sunburn this, you're gonna find that even even the 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 sketches, you can replace these things in two weeks if you had to. But if you just time, everything's fine, and it's a, it's about a month for this skin to be new skin. But if you have burns and if you cut yourself, it can replace in in uh, two weeks. And how many how much time take to cut the heel up? Like a little paper cut, two weeks or a few days. Every day. That's how my toes is go real fast. Now in plant cells, plants don't have bones inside holding them up. They have a cell wall. And this cell wall is made of cellulose, which you now we eat the plant, but we can't digest cellulose. It gives us roughage for our intestines. We gotta have roughage. Uh, and in the case of a plant, instead of being the actin, the cellulose just forms a boundary, and when it's done, you got two cells. So both plants and animals do mitosis. It is a cytokinesis that's a little bit different between the two of them. Because plant cells look like shoe boxes stacked up, kind of squarish looking. Animal cells look kind of roundish looking. Okay? And that, some folks, I asked a question one time, I said, where do you find the cell wall? Inside the cell membrane or outside the cell membrane? It's outside. Gotta be outside. outside. Because the cell divides <coughs> and then the wall forms outside the cell. So the cell membrane must be inside and not outside. This is the picture showing you both the um, animal on the left and the plant on the right. And this, these are two. They don't look like two, but they are two. And there's the cell wall forming. Just inside the cell wall, which you cannot see, would be the cell membrane. So this is formed by actin, and that's formed by cellulose. And both of those are proteins. They're both proteins. And they both can get shorter and change their shape. When you eat, if, if this were a piece of lettuce, the stuff inside here, you can use. But all these cell walls you see, you can't break those down. When you use the bathroom, your stool, that's the cell wall that keeps your intestines open so they work. If everything turned to soup, yeah, it makes a problem. And that's why babies can't, they can't stay on liquid diet for much longer than the body allows. And you start giving them the baby food and all this stuff. It's, 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 it's treated but in but in those in those pears in those little turnips there are those celluloses that starts giving them their dirty diapers for real now you can tell when the baby's on solid food the odor changes baby. but that's but it's got to be it's got to be for the baby to survive so where there was one now you have two where there was one now you have two and of course this would be the the plant that'd be the animal and they're, they're kind of round. It's not, you know, cell member, uh, a nerve cell looks like a star burst. They're not always round. Not always round. But clearly, I can tell plant or animal because these look like boxes. Like this. Okay? Now, here's some more images that I showed that I want to use. Um, and in this case, I can see some chromosomes. I can see the parting of the ways of the centrosomes. I cannot see a single chromosome, and these are still together. So between these two, clearly, this is interphase, and that's prophase. Now, from these two, why is this one still prophase and not metaphase? They're not lined up yet. But I do know that this is <coughs> this is past interphase, so this would be early prophase. And this is even better because I can see now the chromosomes and nucleus is gone. But they haven't lined up, so I know I'm still in prophase. I'm in late prophase. I'm about to get there. I'm about to get there. 
Now, when these fibers, when these fibers pull and tug, and then line up down the middle, and there's your plate. Metaphase. That's metaphase. It's, it's there and gone. Because they here, snap, they're here. Now this, you see the V formations? Mm -hmm. You're always going to see a V. You're always going to see a V, and that's anaphase being pulled apart. Uh, ana means to create. They're about to create two nuclei. Because what's going to happen, when you get over there, they're going to see, see the things right there? That's the nuclear membrane coming back, starting to surround it. And the centriole is by itself, stay by itself to time to divide again, then she'll make two for the next division. He will do, this thing does nothing. He has the best job in the world. He does nothing except one thing. My toes are, he works tail off. And my toes is over, he sits around for the next my toes. Now, and the pinching in, the pinching in. I'm, I'm looking here, do I see any pinching? Mm -hmm. It's about to start though. Little, see how far apart they are? Mm -hmm. By the time they get here, I think I'm gonna see a pinch going on problem. Mm -hmm. So I would not be I would not be surprised when these things are further over here to see a pinching start mm -hmm. and still call that mm -hmm. And the difference in these two, how do I, how do I know late anaphase from early telophase? The nuclear membrane. If you don't see a nuclear membrane, you're not a telophase yet. But telophase is the last phase. And the nucleus comes back. So if you don't see a membrane, inside the membrane, then you know you're not there to telophase. You're, you're real late in anaphase. Telophase is right around the corner. But you're not there yet. I will not give you slides instead of that hard to determine. When I give you a test, you're just cut and dry. Bam. I know what that sucker is. There's some other pictures which I like. Um, this is truly my cousin because there's nothing there showing interface. Uh, these are both. These are both prophase. Um, the nucleus is starting to go away, starting to break down. Um, the spindle is starting to go apart. Still moving apart, but now I get the fibers formed. You see how they're double? So these are double too, but you see them better right here. You see a little knot right there, a little knot right there, a little knot right there. That's these knots. And where the knots are, what I call the central mirror, that's where the fiber is going to grab hold to, the kinetic core. Now, now comes the pushing and tugging and pulling to get them down the middle. So these things are busy pulling. The trick is to get these the center of the cell. And they're going to get there. And the moment he makes it, they're going to separate. They ain't going to, they ain't going to sit there and say, hey, look at me. They're going to separate. And there's your bees again. Can you see the bees? Mm -hmm. Not as pretty as those bees were. They? But they're there. I, I know one thing. I'm being pulled out of the center. Now, on telephase, I see my, I, I can no longer see the chromosomes, right? That's just chromatin. I see my cell dividing. He's not quite finished yet. I know I have one central sown per. So I know I'm in, would you say early, late, or middle telephase? I think it's early. You think it's just starting or halfway done or toward the end? I think it's huh? starting. I think it's between half starting in, in the middle. But he has a long way to go, Daddy. Mm -hmm. He has a long way to go. If this pinch was further down here, then I would say toward the end. Mm -hmm. But clearly, can y'all, can can you tell which one's which by looking at them? PMAT. Mm -hmm. And find that one first, get them out of the way. And I would say, mm -hmm. these two to me are the easiest ones to recognize. Mm -hmm. And that is, when I see two cells pinching like that, but, but these two, if I have interface tacked on two, you gotta look really hard. And you look for the chromosome. If you cannot see chromosomes yet, interface. If you can see chromosomes or the nucleus starting to break down, prophase. Okay? And there's some more. They, these are real. These are actual images. 
In this picture, I, I see that there's, I don't interface. see anything in particular, so this is interface. interface. Now, do you see the, the little masses starting to form? Yeah. And see how yeah, big they're... Mm -hmm. Right now, the nucleus, see how small that is? Mm -hmm. Because the membrane is holding it tight. And now the membrane is gone, so see how they kind of swell out? There, there's, no, there's no bag anymore. But now, clearly, they're down the middle. Is. Are they perfect down the middle? Mm -hmm. Of course not. But can you see the trend? Mm -hmm. Now, can you see any of the V's in there? Yeah. But you know what I see? Separation. Mm -hmm. I see separation. I frankly don't. Oh, I'm, I'm, well, maybe that's a V right there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a V. But I see separation. And that tells me antibodies. Here, this, this is um now between these two, this one just started. But now let me back off. You see this mass up here? They're being pulled apart. This is late antiphase. This is early. This is late. And these are the chromosomes. See the color chromosomes? The red are the fibers. And the dark blue the chromosome. Now, now you gotta track them. So I see a dark I see splotches now, I see splotches of blue. Uh, this chromosomes. I see the blue down the middle and the red fibers. I see blue, I see blue, I see I see more red though, don't y'all? But I know they're in there somewhere. Now I see now that the blue is totally out of the way. These are still the fibers. I do see a little bit of cytokinesis starting on this one. But I still know that's, that's the antiphase. Because this clearly shows the small bunch of... See, these are big, and when they shrink up like this, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go back to interface. So this is a nucleus, and that's the nucleus. The two cells are still dividing. They're not, they're not far from being finished, though. They're not far from being finished, but this is... And then when these two separate, then I'll be right back to interface, which is up here. And they'll get they'll grow and grow and eventually look like this and then they'll do it again. This is another picture showing you another look at it. Um, onion is a plant. Um, the white fish is kind of like a perch, but it's an animal. I want to compare the two types. Now up here, I see a nucleolus. I don't see anything in there that stands out as chromosome. So both of these are just plain old cell living. Now look here. I'm starting to see blotches of chromosome. Here I even see some dark bodies, chromosome. You see right there the, 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 the nuclear membrane, that fine line? He's gone. He's gone. Now, prophase, this is the one kind of turns sideways to you. I see the idea of down the middle. This is a great one here. Clear down the middle. And now, this one clearly shows the, the, y, the, the B formations, separation. That shows separation. Between this one and this one, plant and animal, which do you think is further along? The plant or the animal? He's, for, he, he's almost done with that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're out there. And all left is for the cell, uh, the, the cell wall to form or for the pinching to happen. If you look carefully, I can see the membrane coming back. See right there? Clearly, this is telophase. And can you see like a little cleavage right there happening? Where it's coming in? I see it good over here. And this cell wall makes the cleavage. When you get done, you get they're small. But each one looks like the one it came from. Now they'll get bigger and then they'll do it again. And though these are small, as they grow, each is gonna look like that one again. Okay? Another way look at now, I'm asking you this time. So look at these pictures and see if you can tell me what phase they're in. Let's start with um, but this one first. Meta, phase? Metaphase. No doubt. Metaphase. 
Now this one, what phase do they get in? Eighth phase. Because you cannot see anything as far as coming from. All I see is a, a, a mass of mush. If you can't see them, then you're in interphase. How about this bad boy here? Prophase. I'm starting to see them now. That's prophase. And this one right here? Telephase. They're starting to pinch apart. And this one right here? Yeah. They're separating. What's hard about that? That's mitosis. And a lot of folks are afraid of it. There's, there's no problem. <coughs> and that's all that show. We'll come in on. Uh,